Yo, what up, St. Louis? Ooh. Hey, y'all know what it is, man. What's going on, people? Listen, are you guys ready for post-COVID-19, man? Listen, the good word says this too shall pass. So we got some great stuff for you today on the St. Louis Hustle podcast with Cortez Hustle and Michelle A. So let's roll this intro and get right into it. Growing up in St. Louis has never been easy, and most say, if you want to succeed here, that you must leave and put down roots somewhere else because of the strong crabs in a barrel mentality here. I don't know if I'm just an optimistic person, but to see people like Chuck Berry and Nelly make it in the music industry, or the Roberts Brothers and Dave Stewart in business, or William Lacey Clay Jr. in politics, can we blame the city, or is it that people just aren't hungry enough? We're talking to all of the movers and shakers in this town, from entertainers to politicians, social activists and organizers, and of course, entrepreneurs. Is there a curse on this city that holds people back? Is there an unseen hand that decides who makes it and who doesn't? You're about to find out. Welcome, Welcome to St. Louis Hustle. Hustle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to St. Louis Hustle Podcast. We are on episode number four, people, and we are super excited that you decided to come hang out with us as live. We're, uh, as always, we're streaming live and direct from the St. Louis, where are we streaming live from? The St. Louis Credit Repair Institute Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Go to stlcreditfix.com for all of your credit repair uh help and solutions what up shell man what's going on tez listen uh corona virus and uh quarantine uh they they got a, yeah. i like the name that they got for it. they calling it social distancing uh <laughs> it's, it's for the political correct way to say it is social distancing man this coronavirus is <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's got us a little stretched out, man. It's, it's got us a little stretched out. I don't really know what to say about it. Um, but it's got us, it's got us stretched out. Um, they got us distance stretched out, like distance. Um, <laughs> us, you know, all separated and such. I don't know how to feel about it. You know, uh, it's like give me fifty feet. Um, give me six feet. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm a phone. You know. Um, yeah. I, I don't know really where to go with that. Um, because you right. know, I. I to be close to my neighbors, you know. You Rich know one team. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. So um I, I don't know. Normally we kick it off with uh what you do this week uh or this weekend and uh probably not a whole bunch of nothing, right? <laughs> yeah, um what I do this weekend, not a damn thing. So there it is. <laughs> this um I ain't really do much. Uh that's what I did this weekend. Um Wow, I um, you know what? Here's what I did. Um, I I uh, went to the living room, you know, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, oh oh, you know what? When I after I left the living room, I went to the kitchen, okay. uh, and okay. I jumped back to the living room, <laughs> and then um, once I left there, um, I skipped on over to the hallway and kicked mm -hmm. it in the hallway for a little bit, <laughs> and, and uh, went back to the bedroom. And mm -hmm. she did the kitchen room, and then I went to the bathroom. It was an exciting weekend. <laughs> In the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty much uh, a lot of the same for me. Um, didn't do a, a whole lot. I, I, we, we had several trips to the store is uh, what we did. Uh, <laughs> because, yeah. you know, I, I'm of the opinion that since you're going to be quarantined, then you might as well take this opportunity to start doing something special or or trying to do something positive so we decided that we're gonna start eating right uh while we are quarantined so oh. my sugar gets online and looks up all these different diets and every time she looks up a diet we don't have the necessary ingredients uh, to make that diet work so we got to go back to the stove so i was at the stove about 16 times uh, over the weekend, <laughs> what we that's, what about, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's <laughs> she's keeping you busy, 
You know yeah. what I'm saying? Some version of the honeydew list, you know? Absolutely. Let me find something for this Negro to be. Oh, <laughs> right. uh, uh, Cortez, uh, you like, skirt. <laughs> Yeah. Keep you busy. Keep your mind engaged is what she was doing. She's keeping yeah. you busy. Yeah. She didn't want you thinking. She noted that she what do the words say mm -hmm. that the uh, idle mind is the devil's playground. See, that's what the words say. <laughs> that's so right. She have an idle mind. You know what I'm saying? So she was keeping your mind engaged by keeping you busy back and forth and forth and back to the stove. Well, I wanted to make sure that the I was going to keep the engine idling while she run her butt back and forth to the stove. Uh, <laughs> that was, so we've got um, a lot of fruits and veggies. Uh, and that was that was a given because you want to keep your immune system healthy during this time. Um, right. And then she was like, well, you know what? I seen some recipes on uh, zucchini and all of these different things, but we got the zucchini, but I don't have the uh, mozzarella cheese. I don't have, all right, so we're back to the stove and we got that stuff, all right? So right. we come back right. and uh, this was probably Saturday. Sunday, there's a new diet, um, some different recipes. So, of course. A constant improvement, you know? <laughs> we don't no, have what we need to fulfill that diet. So we're back to the store again. I got so badly. <laughs> Yeah, see, I'm, I'm on her side. I'm all, I'm gonna be yeah. on her side to this. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then my three younger sons, who aren't little boys no more, uh, 18, 20, and 21, are all oh. back at the house. They shut my son's college down, so he came back home. We wasn't used, we, we ain't prepared for that. See, when we moved into this new place, uh, uh -huh. it was just room for me and my wife and baby boy. Right. So uh, child number three decided that Texas wasn't, he wasn't feeling Texas no more. So he comes back home. All right. So yeah. now it's me, my wife, baby boy, and number three. Then they decided with Corona, COVID-19, they're going to shut down uh, the whole town of Marshall where my son was going to Missouri Valley. So now he's got to come back home. Now, we wow. was only prepared. We, we moved into this place for me my sugar and baby boy. Now it's me, sugar, baby boy, number two and number three, right? Hi. So I said all that to say I was back at the store again, Michelle, because them jokers can eat. Uh <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. It's like Pac-Man up in there. They probably like, wah, 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 wah. they probably eat you out of house and home. They yeah. probably like, what you get out of here? What you doing? Yeah. yeah. That and is number three's job shut down for two weeks so at least he got shut down with pay but right. i ain't used to that joke of being here 24 7 365 so i'm like y'all need to your job needs to open back up so at least that's eight hours that you are gone <laughs> <laughs> right eight hours of him looking at you looking at him like right what we gonna, like, do? What we gonna do it's COVID. Right. Uh, like, man, if you don't go sit yourself down, so, right. and then you know, I make all of my money online, so right. I need a strong Wi Fi signal. Well, right. baby boy, number two and number three, they mm -hmm. all got these different game systems, they've all got these different devices. And <laughs> now, uh, if you want to see somebody go crazy, take someone who's used to super fast internet and wi-fi and put them on a slow connection right <laughs> and that's what i'm dealing with because all these jokers are online with these devices and these games and they streaming one is upstairs two downstairs they playing each other on the game but they all need separate tvs and separate gaming systems and all that i'm like man we had yep. atari and one joystick <laughs> now each one of y'all Got y'all own game console. So, right. yeah, they can talk that COVID one, stuff all they want to. This is a different era. <laughs> you hear me? One, look, look, let me just touch on that. You had one joystick. And if your mama was like, my mama, fight over it if you want to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, my mama, that's where I got it from. My mama was like, for a game between here and here, fight <laughs> if you want to. Right up through the neck. I'm, I'm getting all this. I'll do it if you want to. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man. Yeah. See, 
But you had it good. See, now it might seem good. You know, my kids are out of the house, right? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, why? <laughs> okay, my kids are out the house, which would seem like a good thing. But see, what they did is they got together and they here, here's how it went down Saturday morning. Ma, what you doing? No, it was uh yeah Saturday morning. Ma, what you doing? Well, I'm get ready, to get up, take a shower. Oh well, um. I so said, what are you guys doing? Well, what are you doing? I hear the other one in the background at the <laughs> other one's house. What are you doing? Oh, well, nothing really. Um, Kai's over here. Well, we're getting ready to eat pizza and wings, but, I mean, nothing really. Pizza and wings, I like pizza and wings. I mean, you know what? <laughs> we're not really doing anything. We're just going to, you know what, nothing. But but I didn't get invited. I can't have pizza and wings. I can't come for the pizza and wings party. I, I didn't get an invite. When I get mine, I got lost in the mail. Mm. They got mad. Here's the thing. I said, let me get in the shower. I'm on my way. We really didn't invite you. <laughs> <laughs> the devil is a lie. I have a key. I invited myself. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mama's on my way. It had an attitude because I was on my way. Mm -hmm. I have a key. I'm coming in. That's how they call you. <laughs> so they didn't want to get there. I make myself a plate, generously, I might add. Then <laughs> they sit at the table enjoying the morning mimosas mm -hmm. with their feet and their wings. I'm on the couch, segregated, because we observing. They can sit together, but I'm observing 60 feet. I can't sit with them. And I'm just like, they're talking about me like I can't hear them. I'm like, I can I'm hear right. you. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. So I look at her. She, oh, she right. Why she had to come over here? Look at her. <laughs> don't give her nothing else to drink. Oh my goodness, she's had enough. Cut her like I'm at the bar all of a sudden, and I didn't have wow. one too many. I like I need to be put. Like I need to be cut off, and I need somebody to call me a cab to, to get me home. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah. So awesome, awesome. Well, interesting times, and I think they're going to get even more interesting. So when we come back from break, guys, we're going to talk about how your job treating you during this COVID-19. See, there's a lot of us who are experiencing uh, the real people around us because this COVID, it was cool to day one and day two of quarantine. Now we at day six and we starting to see the real people come out. Uh, yeah. Well, the same is true for some of these companies. We're going to talk about some experiences that we both were privy to and how some of these companies are treating employees during this COVID-19. I want you guys to weigh in. Is your job treating you like they care about you or are they treating you like uh, illness or not, Jigger? You got to be in here and on this clock. So when we come back, we're going to talk about that. St. Louis Social Podcast is brought to you by Reggie the Lion. Go to ReggieTheLion.com, grab yourself a copy of The Coloring Book, and keep up with all the latest developments of the dog and everything that Reggie the Lion is planning to bring to our children. Also, check out OfficeHuddlePrint.com. All of the graphic designs that you've seen for the St. Louis Social Podcast are courtesy of Office Huddle Print Shop. Our good friends helped us with logos, flyers, thumbnails, even our merchandise, courtesy of OfficeHuddlePrint.com. St. Louis Credit Repair Institute, get your credit in the right order. SELCreditFix.com, they average 50 to 150 point increases for over 100,000 customers so far, and you can be next. SELCreditFix.com. The St. Louis Hustle Podcast is a copyrighted production of iHustle Media Group. Any unauthorized use of the content of this show is strictly prohibited. iHustle Media Group, a better way to market. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to St. Louis Social Podcast, coming live and direct from the uh, St. Louis Credit Repair Institute studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, before we went to break, we were talking about whether or not your job was treating you like uh, I, I don't know, like a human being uh, during this coronavirus, because right. we've heard some horror stories so far that these jobs ain't uh, acting too much like they care about who you is. 
as an individual, as a person, right? Uh, so right. a quick story, um, you know, my sister-in-law uh, happened to be in uh, close proximity to someone uh, who may have tested positive for the virus. Now, this test that they did, I thought they had to swab, you do a little blood work to figure out if you are really COVID-19, COVID-19. Well, they didn't do that to the person my cousin, my, my sister-in-law was riding with, but nevertheless, they determined that she was positive. So she calls to her job and they was like, and was like, hey, you know what? I, I you know, may have been exposed to this whole COVID deal. And um, supervisor, real cold, um, ain't asked how you doing, who shot down, nothing. Uh, come get this laptop and uh, get your butt online. So the question is, if you are currently still employed, able to get out and go to work, what is the vibe? What are the feelings like with uh, your employers? Do you feel like they're treating you like a human being or is it... Uh, hey man, we got to get this bag. So get your butt in here or get this laptop and go home and get online. What say you, Shell? Man, so um, here it is. <clears throat> without disclosing too much information, <laughs> right? Um, without naming any names, I know said company. Um, my uh, um, my daughters work for a company and. Um, they uh you know it's a call center environment and they're made they're being made to go into the office right so here's what confused me mm -hmm. um they have to go into the office and uh, the mayor said clearly essential jobs right mm -hmm. and when she gave her press conference she said essential mm -hmm. grocery stores um first responders um you know this is a serious thing you know and we're hearing on the news, we just heard the St. Louis had, St. Louis City had their first death, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, our condolences to the family of the young lady that, that we lost, you know, yesterday. Um, that that's a, that's a serious thing, you know, right. this is not a joke, right? So mm -hmm. there, it's not a suggestion. The mayor said, this is not a suggestion. We are not recommending. This is a requirement. If you don't have to go to work, you really shouldn't mm -hmm. first respond hospital people, um, you know, restaurant, there are some businesses that just really have to be operational to keep the economy going, right? right, right. Um, call center environment <laughs> to be, they should enable those businesses to work from home. Mm -hmm. There I said, yeah. views that are expressed by me or my views, there I said. <laughs> and so them making people physically go into the office putting those people at risk, eh, I kind of, I'm in my feelings about that, right? So yeah. um, they simply made these people, um, or they simply made it so these people can sit further away from each other. Mm -hmm. um, they <laughs> sent certain employees home, enabling these call center people to sit further away, right? Right. But they still, people are still coming into the office coughing. People mm -hmm. um, are still coming into the office you don't know what they are exposed to when they go home. And mm -hmm. so the risk is still there, right? right. And and I just think that um, it just, it saddens me because the availability for some employees to work from home is there and mm -hmm. the choice for some companies to not allow those employees to work from home is the reasonings behind the choices are are just concerning. Yeah. When when and they could let them. And and it's it's sad, you know. Um one of my daughters is has asthma. She's high risk. Mm -hmm. Uh but she also lives on her own and has bills to pay. So that puts right. a young person who lives on their own, it puts them in this weird position that says, I have to choose my health over paying my bills. And yes, you know, people who are almost 29 <laughs> um, I don't know how to make those decisions to say hey i'm gonna go and pay my bills but someone who's younger they're thinking no i have to go to work and pay my bills you know mm -hmm. i have to go to work we we know no i'm choosing my health i'm gonna be okay right. the younger person thinks that they have to go to work so yeah. she's risking her health um to, to be there
Yeah, and, that's that is crazy. And you are right uh, about that. Uh, my wife uh, is in a situation as well. <clears throat> now she is a contract worker, a temporary employer uh, employee for the company that she works for. And we noticed there is a staunch difference between how they attempted to treat her versus how they treat their permanent employees. Um, and even though my wife has been contracting off and on with this company and, and one of the, the, the same supervisor and, and group of people she's been working with for a while, just, just off and on, you think they know my sugar by now, um, but she ain't going for it. She like, listen, it's the principle. Uh, you won't allow me to take my laptop home to work right. from home. You want me to come in, but ain't nobody else in the office coming in. In fact, this one particular employer, they actually have a secret disc uh, uh, location for permanent employees, like an emergency situation type deal to keep the things going and all of the permanent employees you know were assigned to go to that location and it's like no nah, you temps y'all uh y'all stay over here uh with the virus uh we don't got but one hand one bottle of sanitizer for the whole building uh but over here in the you know we didn't prep this place you know <laughs> so um polar land while we go over here to the promised land you know what i'm saying you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, no, seriously, it, it is, uh, you know, sugar like, um, I ain't concerned. Uh, I, and they know the reason that she's on this special assignment, she only works a couple of days a week because she takes care of her elderly parents. And right. they're like, uh, can you come in today and run these reports? She's like, uh, no. <laughs> uh, you could have, because I'm a temp, I'm not allowed to take my laptop home. I could be at home running y'all reports, but you right. want to put not only me at risk, my family at risk, but you also know I take care of my aging parents uh, and you know they are more susceptible than anybody to uh, this particular virus and for it to have lethal effects. Um, so yeah, they ain't seen her in seven or eight days. And she's like, you know, she was debating on going back because it does affect our money in the household. Um, but she's like, you know what, do I put my family and my people at risk for some stinking reports that are non-essential? Like you said, uh, her job is not an essential function where she has to be at work. So I just thought that was very insensitive uh, of them. So let us know in the comments, is your job being sensitive to your needs as a human being during this coronavirus or, or are they being jerks about the whole situation and trying to pull strings? Because I think, um, you know, with a lot of people living check to check in this day and age and uh, struggling financially, I think you're starting to see uh, some of the true colors of these employers uh, yeah. coming out and my question is this, and this is why we titled this episode, Are You Ready for Post-COVID-19? See, now that your company, in a lot of cases, are revealing their true colors about how they really don't care about you, uh, what are you going to do about that? Are you going to be the same person after COVID-19 uh, that you were going into COVID-19. And I don't think you can afford to be that same person. So when we come back from break, we're going to talk about some uh, special things and some weird things that we see people doing. Okay, before we go to break, Shell has got her hand up. What you got? I'm an emoji right quick. Okay. <laughs> um, um, so I just want to, can you clarify that question? Your mm -hmm. question is, Pre-COVID, pre-coronavirus. Uh-huh. How what kind of employee were you before corona coronavirus? Yes. So what kind of employee were you before? You went to work on time. You love your job. You walked in and you was like, do 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 <laughs> do, 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 do do You walked in on time. You was like, hey Bob, hey Sarah, hey Phil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? After coronavirus, you was like, mm. Mm. You were, I mean, how you go back to work? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to make the question real. How you yeah. go back to work? Are you walking in, kicking over stuff? 
Are you mm-hmm. walking in laughing, folks? Are you walking in like get them reports out of my face? Like, get out of here. <laughs> oh, reports? Oh, you want me to run a report? You you got a car to beat. You want me to run a report? You gotta mm-hmm. give them all neck action. You gotta and give them this. Okay. Yeah. Practice with me. Pull back and give them the neck. <laughs> Put with me, pull back, and give them the neck. Uh, okay, you want me to... neck. <laughs> That's not what we're doing today. How are you going to be different when you go back? Don't yeah. go back and be a boy. That's not the goal. That's not the mission. It's or maybe that is. Mission. Okay, Good. I don't know. Just trying to find out. I just wanted to see what we was going for real work with questions. I just wanted to yeah. make it real. Okay. Now, a- absolutely, after- man. So when we come back from break, let us know in the comments, man. Are you looking at your job the same post COVID-19 or do you got that side eye like, hmm. Your man, you know, you looking at him like, oh, you stink now. <laughs> All right, yeah. keep it locked right here. We'll be right back. I have done two prior Young Jeffy Better Health Now challenges. I decided this time around I needed an extra push a good thing to remember is 32 pounds is the weight of my three and a half year old son and i am not carrying around a, a three and a half year old basically i'm a mother of four i just want to want to see how healthy i can get so that i can be around for a while it's pretty amazing whenever you're excited to get on the scales every morning and see what the numbers are instead of dreading it when i went to convention last year the day of the 5k when this lady merle came across the finish line it, she was visually impaired. She was blind. From this day forth, I said, I'm, I'm changing my lifestyle and I'm just going to be a whole new me. I was out of control. I really let myself go. And I thought, okay, who loses 12 pounds in a week? I'm like, this is such a joke. But it happened and it happened again and again and again. Anybody can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Leading up to today has been a whirlwind but I feel amazing everybody makes you feel really awesome when you come here too so it just kind of like heightens your excitement about everything I feel so much better if I could help just one person be able to do that for their life then it'd be worth it all I feel amazing I can't believe how far I've came from last year to this year I have kept my weight off within two to five pounds which is a complete miracle (laughs) let's go (laughs) All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the St. Louis Hustle podcast, live and direct from the STL Credit Repair Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. We always catch Michelle uh, doing multitasking and something else every time we come back from break. <laughs> Nevertheless, for all your credit repair needs, go to stlcreditfix.com uh, and check them out. They've got some great strategies to help you get your credit to the next level. So uh, let us know in the comments, man. Is your job treating you like a human being during this time, man? And we've heard some stories of some people being real insensitive. And as a result, can you go back to said job the yeah. same way with the same attitude? I know for a fact my wife ain't going back to the same job in, in the same way for two reasons. A, they got to look at her side eye because on several occasions like can you come run these reports and she like uh whitney houston hell to the no um (laughs) you're going to expose me and my family and then i've got to go take care of my mom no i'm not coming to run your stinking reports and what they thought because it's a temporary situation and what what we got is hierarchy there was almost like um you need this money so you're gonna come in because we say you gonna come in and y'all don't understand man y'all don't understand she married to a go-getter by nature that's all i do is go get it so we do not need uh while it's nice to have come on man that that ain't that ain't what we're doing here uh that's it that's it man that's 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 what i do man uh Gangster for real, y'all. Don't play with him. He's yeah, really a gangster. Yeah. yeah. So 
Uh, are you going back to your job if they looking at you side at or you know how is that whole dynamic going to work so let us know in the comments and we'll come back to that a little later yeah. but uh, as we were all quarantined as we are currently all quarantined we're starting to see some interesting behaviors from mm. our society nowadays i know you saw some interesting stuff online and and you know talk a little bit about some of the the newness of who we've become uh post uh, uh uh with this social distancing stuff okay so first things first right so i want to um mention with the whole quarantine thing um people are, are being safe right people have to stay safe and um i get that right i understand and and i i I understand staying safe, being safe. I get it. My eyelash is really bothering me. And so this is, <laughs> this is a real tangible moment right here. Because see, and, and this goes right along with what I'm saying, because uh, people are being quarantined and everything. Mm -hmm. um, we are creating a new era of what they call it when you have to do it yourself. They call it what? D-Y-I? Mm -hmm. No, D-I-Y. D-I-Y. There you go. Yeah, D-I-Y, right? Cause my barber, shout out to my barber. Right? <laughs> say his name. Yeah. Say his name, Chef. Uh, and, and, unless something else no, he's is my about barber to come. Unless, unless he ain't got bad no name. is about to come out, out after this, then don't say his name. <laughs> he ain't got no name. <laughs> he's quarantine. Okay, when he out of quarantine and my head don't look a mess, he is the grooming lounge by the white folks. But. <laughs> Quarantine, he in quarantine, and my head look the best. He ain't got no. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Oh. The room lounge, and my lash lady, my lash lady. While I'm over here gluing lashes on, it's six thirty in the morning, and gluing my eyes keep sticking together because I did my own lashes this morning, and that's why I'm just like <laughs> sticking together. I'm like Jesus, and my eyes to be look like I'm. If it looks like I'm asleep, I'm not asleep. My eyes are stuck together. <laughs> and I just need the saints to pray. That's your what eyes, I need. Don't your eyes are glued shut because like, you had to she do was it yourself. Up night, <laughs> she was up all night gallivanting, talking to somebody on the phone all night. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That ain't what happened. Hmm. No, I wasn't up all night caking on the phone. That ain't what happened because Cheryl wouldn't do that. That's right. I That's keep right. my eyes because I put my own damn lashes on there. <laughs> That's what happened. That's what happened. So my girl, uh, Body by Bazell says, nope, she's at work right now. So they are not treating her like a human being. They don't care nothing about she got five kids at home and she's a wife and the mother and uh, trying to be safe. She's like, nah, I'm at work right now. Um, but we know that. Tell her, slap our supervisor. And tell her she's safe. <laughs> Tell her, tell her she just go church online on Sunday. Tell her go on slap supervisor real quick. T just get it off her heart. And and because she don't want to hold that inside. God, yeah. God know anyway. So she might as well go on slap her supervisor. So you heard it from Auntie Shell. Slap your supervisor and then go to virtual church on Sunday. There it is. <laughs> and you gotta repent. Now you can't slap your supervisor and not repent. Because if you slap supervisor, you don't repent, that's a bad thing. But if you slap your supervisor and then you repent and be like, Lord, you be like, Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord. I mean, he is just and able to forgive you. <laughs> she said slapping in progress. Uh, so speaking of virtual church, man, we're seeing some unusual behavior. Sorry, my bad. And I think this is going to be some of like the new normal stuff that you're going to see. So what did you see that, that had you? Um... Man. Thank God for Jesus. Thank you for pulling me back, man. Okay, so uh, that's what happened. Your eyes stick together. Okay, so this I was online, and so mm -hmm. some of the things that I've seen online, so creative, right? This is what happened when you quarantine folks, right? They get really, really creative. So um, a couple of my people, um, I've seen a couple of different churches online, right? People, a couple of different churches are doing Sunday services. A lot of churches are doing the Sunday services online. So, you know, shout out to all of the churches that were doing that. Um, my church, awesome church. If you're looking for a church home, the worship center, the, the worship center, <laughs> plug the worship, 
<laughs> Worship Center STL. Off the terms. Um, shout out to my pastor. She'll be like, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> lots of churches for online services, so that's an awesome thing. But a lot of my uh, Facebook friends were doing um, karaoke online. Mm. Uh, man, um, I'm trying to think of my, my my little brother's name. Shout out to um, I'm trying to think of his Facebook name was uh, um, Mitchell. Just just Justin Mitch? No, not Justin Mitchell. Oh Lord Jesus, Jay Mitchell. Mm. Okay. I know his name, but anyway, one of my one of my peoples. Uh, he it was just really creative. He did karaoke online, and as people joined his live, they were coming into his church, and he did all kinds of AP <laughs> selections. It's really creative. He had his really colorful jacket on. J mm -hmm. something Mitchell is, and um, it was just it was just amazing. Um, but what I really loved was there were a couple of DJs that I saw. Um, mm -hmm that were doing um, DJ parties, like house parties online, which I was not privy to. It was the first time I ever seen something like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, this one DJ um, out of Atlanta, he was a gospel DJ, um, and I think it was uh, DJ Dex. He had like 11, 12,000 people on his live. And this wow. dude was straight in shout music. He was playing church music, mm -hmm. shout track, but he straight had like 12,000 people rocking with him. Playing shout track, you know what I'm saying, for like two hours. And um, it was amazing, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And um, it, it, it was it was amazing, you know? So people are really getting creative with this. Um, there was a couple other DJs um, that, you know, had people rocking with them that, you know, had hundreds of thousands of people just in their live feed, yeah. thinking it with them. So people are using this as an opportunity to um, still, still stay connected, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I really think this is an opportunity for social media um to really be a platform um right. so use it you know don't let this time get by you don't sit idle and let this time just be thumb twiddling you know right. take right. the time and capitalize on it you know make it work for you make it work for you yeah you know? no, i agree wholeheartedly um you know and and for me it's not that new for me because you know, this is how I eat already. Uh, I'm an yeah. online marketer. I'm a digital marketer. I'm a network marketer. I build my brand online. Uh, and for years, uh, I've been coaching people and trying to get people to see the yeah. importance of going digital with what it is that you do and uh, how you do it. And I think now people are starting to get it right. It's starting to show up in a lot of different ways. And uh, this book right here, mm -hmm. Monetize My Life, Four Incredibly Simple Ways to Profit from Your Passions with Little to No Startup Costs. We're starting to see people execute on this. And this book was published in 2018. And I love it because now people are starting to see that, wait a minute, we have a direct to consumer opportunity that says, listen, I don't need a publishing company to publish a book, right? Amazon, yep. create space, went straight through, wrote it myself, published it myself, right? People are starting to see that, wait a minute, there's opportunities here. People are quarantined with they chilling for the first time ever. And they like, I'm supposed to be teaching these jokes or something. Well, guess what? If you're a school teacher, there's platforms yeah. like Zoom. There's platforms like Facebook. You can create a private Facebook group, invite paying customers to say, hey, I'll teach your kid math and science on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm going to teach them English and social studies on Mondays and Wednesdays for $25 a week per kid. You have an online school with a certified teacher, right? See, teachers have had that ability since 1998 when... Uh, Al Gore created the internet, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Al Gore, but really? This was, this has always been available, but now they're starting to see it like, wait a minute. Instead of screaming about being underpaid, and I, I truly believe that teachers are underpaid, right? They right. are, but they are. there is something you can do about that to supplement that thing, you can create your own online school 
like in five minutes or less. You go to zoom.us, you got your free account, and boom, you go on Facebook and say, hey, if your kid is struggling in math and you don't know how to teach them that new math, then yep. jump in this private Facebook group and I'm going to teach them how to do new math because they're not allowed to uh, borrow and carry the one no more. They got to do it a new way. Well, what? I'm going to teach them how to borrow and carry the one. So they're going to go back to school all jacked up if, if I got to teach them. Right, because I'm just, what, that's not a thing? No, that's not, that's not, that's not. <laughs> no, they've got these new methods and these new systems and, you know, you got to line everything up and you deal with everything in this line and that line. I'm like, man, listen, you right. take some from the zero, right? You got to cut that down. And, man, I'm, I'm not telling you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she said, is Zoom a good stock? Uh, one of our, our reviewers is asking about Zoom as a stock. Zoom, since quarantine, has put an extra $2 billion into their account because of all the people who had to go get a subscription so they can start getting some of this online money, building some of these online communities. So I don't know if you missed that wave, but they did, uh, they're up $2 billion with a B over the last 14 to 20 days or so, whenever this quarantine thing started. So uh, yeah, they, they, they on top of it. Um, no, so, that's not yeah, I just, I just, I just think now is the time, man. And I know you saw uh, the the DJs, uh, but there's also a lot of goofy stuff out there too online, right? Man, <laughs> there. Um, okay, so y'all know I've been like Cardi B is my girl. You know, people say what they want about Cardi B. That's my home girl right there. That 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 the goofier that the goofier the meme the better. And that coronavirus song. Somebody mm -hmm. did, somebody took her little video of her talking about the coronavirus and coronavirus <laughs> and, and how is, she's like, I'm getting kind of scared. You know, this is real, you know, it's real. and they made it the little hip hop track. Then it slowed that joker down and made a country song out of Ooh. it. Um, that, that is hilarious, you know, and, and. I just I love it. So people are doing all kinds of creative, goofy things. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a joint. Somebody caught a squirrel. No, a raccoon. Um, out, somebody caught a, a raccoon in front of a um, uh, a fountain, and it looked like the raccoon was like washing his hands mm -hmm. in front of a fountain. Like the raccoon was like, "I got to. This is real. This is real right here." The coronavirus then hit the animal kingdom, and, and it's just going viral. <laughs> and, you know, so people again. You know, there's just countless things on, on Facebook and people are just posting stuff. And so, again, use the use the, the Internet. You know, people are, are getting in on it and people are just dropping their, their cash apps. Dollar sign, Michelle, a hey, people are just dropping their cash Yeah, just, just drop it on out there. It's, it's, you never know yeah. what happens. You, know, you never know who's you know, feeling generous. Example. <laughs> Somebody wanted to know how Cash App worked. Dollar sign Michelle A A A Y E. Just if people <laughs> wanted to know yeah. how Cash App worked with the internet when they're on Facebook Live, yeah. Cash App Dollar sign Michelle A. Just you know, just, uh, just in case they want to test it out. You know, you can yeah, test it with two, three, five four, five dollars just to see if it's gonna go through. Yeah, you know, because if somebody, because I was just thinking those DJs, right? Then one guy had like 11, 12,000 people in his live. I'm like, if they just sent him $5 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to make a killing, just buy yeah. a cash app that brother, $5. Yeah. You know, just, just a tip. Ooh, just a tip. Damn, that's for the, hey, just pay. And, 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 and he was really working hard. He was sweating. <laughs> You know, I know his neighbors probably was like, this joker needs to sit down. I'm on the floor, but he needs to sit down somewhere. But I mean, all jokes aside, you know, that's that's a you can monetize that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Good. And there's nothing wrong with that. And when we come back from break, man, I'm gonna we're gonna talk about some things that you can do on the positive tip, man. You guys know I'm big on the E to E ratio, right? So we're gonna talk about the E to E ratio and some things that you can do to make sure that you are not the same person post COVID-19 uh, that you were pre COVID-19 because the world is going to be different, man. And I think you're going to need to be different as well in order to maintain. So keep it locked right here.
Yo, what's up, St. Louis? Let me ask you a serious question. If I saw $20 about to fall out of your pocket, you want me to tell you, right? Well, the fact of the matter is, I see three to $600 per month falling out of your paycheck every month. So guess what? This is me telling you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is H. Cortez, wealth strategist, author, and I'm on a mission to empower our community economically through financial education. So the last five years, I've been fortunate enough to be trained and coached by some multimillionaires. And you know what I learned? Is that there's only four things that we have to overcome if we ever plan to build generational wealth. You have to overcome taxes, you have to overcome debt, we have to overcome our credit woes, and we have to overcome our lack of asset accumulation. But if we stop the bleeding by overpaying taxes three to $600 per month, and that's not me saying that, that comes straight from the IRS. So if you want to know if you're one of the 80 million people that's overpaying taxes, all I want you to do is go over to payraise.wealthcreationplaybook.com, watch a short video, answer seven questions, and you can find out if you're overpaying taxes, but more importantly, you'll find out what you can do to stop the bleeding. Payraise.wealthcreationplaybook.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the St. Louis Hustle <laughs> Podcast. Uh, coming live and direct from the STL Credit Repair Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. And yes, we call Shelley tripping yet again. Uh, uh, yeah, she's always multitasking, y'all. <laughs> always looking like I'm with somebody got a business. Hello. <laughs> Beautiful people. How are you today? Make sure you go to stlcreditfix.com if you need help with your credit. And listen, guys, they're actually giving away a free vacation if you grab their Financial Edge membership to get your credit fixed. So, Shelly, what are you over there doing that you ain't got no business? And you, you popping up looking guilty uh, as a mug. Uh, <laughs> I wish I was doing something interesting. Like, you know, I can actually have my glasses on. I don't. And that's how I'm trying to read my other phone. And I just, yeah. I, I would, here, Here's the thing. Here's the one thing you know about me. I can never rob a bank or do anything, like, wrong. And you would not, like, you would always know when I'm doing something, like, wrong. Because that's the look you're going to see. It will be this. <laughs> like, give me the money. I'm so sorry. That, yeah, I did that. I robbed the bank. Here go the money. I shouldn't have did it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he did it too. I, I wouldn't. Hmm. I couldn't do anything wrong. So I will stay honest. Like, I would be a bad person. Yeah. I couldn't rob a bank. I'd be a bad cheater. I couldn't cheat on my, well, I did cheat on my taxes, but that didn't work out for me. I had to. <laughs> I'm just saying, I would not be successful with doing wrong things. It just never works out for life because I always come with this look. So, <laughs> it's, it's tough. so what she's saying is, uh, if you want to do dirt, she ain't the partner for you, because uh, she's gonna get y'all caught up. She, she, uh, that's I'm, what's gonna happen. We <laughs> going to We going get y'all caught up. <laughs> we going to jail. I'm the wrong one to commit a crime. With. It's probably why I really got many friends. Be like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> nah, we try to do dirt. Don't call shit. It, nah, no, it ain't, it ain't gonna work out. They'd be like, they got nobody else but shell. <laughs> they put a look. She, I'm the or if I, if you do choose me, I'm the one got the word of uh, with the, the the mask. Put the mask on me because yeah. again, <laughs> so, I'm awesome. Listen, guys. So we we went left before we went to break. We were talking about the E to E ratio and the fact that coronavirus, guys. I don't know if you're paying attention. But one thing I do know is that the world, the entire world will never be the same post COVID-19. My question to you is, are you going to be the same post COVID-19? So Dr. George Frazier from FrazierNet.com, Power Networking Conference, uh, my, my guy is just serious about 
uh, helping to educate us. He talks about the E to E ratio, and that's your education to entertainment ratio. What does that look like for you? Are you, my friend, during this quarantine, this social distancing, are you spending more time entertaining yourself than you are educating yourself? Because I got a sneaky suspicion that pre-corona virus, most people's E to E ratio was all out of whack. And I'm not saying yeah. there's anything wrong with you spending $500 to go see Beyonce when she come to town. If this thing blows over, Janet will be in town. Sure, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. My question to you is, if you are willing to spend $500, and that's on the low end because most women took their daughters, so they got new outfits, the daughter got new outfits, they got hair done, makeup got done, they got, you know, some of them got limo services to take. So if you are willing to spend $500,000 to go see Beyonce. Nothing wrong with that. I love that you are creating relationships and memories with your daughter. Are you also willing, though, to spend $500 on a workshop where you can go and learn a skill? Are you also willing to go to a power networking conference, for instance, and spend $500? That's what the E to E ratio is all about, right? I spend a couple hundred dollars a month on cable and internet to entertain myself and my children but I also spend three to four times that on my education because I'm growing as an entrepreneur. So that is the question. What does your E to E ratio look like? Because I believe you cannot be the same person post COVID-19 that you were pre COVID-19 and have success in this new world that's coming to be. So share a couple things that people could do to you Ooh. know help grow or change or you know help usher in this post COVID nineteen. You know what? I'm glad you asked. Couple things. I just this right off the dome. I didn't even prepare for this. <laughs> and you might be able to tell. Um from my point of view, I think a couple things that we could do. Um read a book. Read it. you can read a book. Yeah. A book. Double okay. Read and I book. bet a lot of us got one or two that we've been saying we're gonna read for a minute. You know what? Particularly, <laughs> you can read a book. Particularly, read your Bibles, people. Read your Bibles. Um, all jokes aside, I think that um, from a spiritual side right mm -hmm. i think that first of all things don't happen by accident right so yeah. um i think that us having this time to kind of um have this this chill out time this time with our families i don't think this is by accident right mm -hmm. some of us working from home some of us having the time off this is not like god is sitting somewhere like mm, i didn't know this was gonna happen <laughs> i mean you know what i'm saying right. we, we kind of we know now we don't always have all the answers Mm -hmm. ourselves for knowing why one thing led to another but nothing surprises God and we don't know why all the events happen the way that they do but we know that he is the greatest planner he knows the end from the beginning and while we're in this and while we don't know why he's allowed everything to happen while we're in it and yet we don't know the full unveiling mm -hmm. we have to kind of do the best we can while we're in it right um yeah. which is is um i think try to understand where we are in the moment which is take the opportunity to grow closer to him mm -hmm. learn more about him in the moment learn more about ourselves in the moment yeah uh, so we can kind of find out where we're going while we're, mm -hmm. where we're going um that's one thing that i had tried to try i've been trying to do um as i learn more about him I learn more about myself and I'm able to know where I'm going so that mm -hmm. as I am building financial yeah. wealth, I'm trying to build that road to where I'm going financially, um, I'm not all over the place. I don't want to be all over the place. I want to have yeah. a good sense of direction. So learn more about yourself. Try to grow spiritually. That's the mm -hmm. bulk of it. Try to grow yeah. spiritually by connecting with God. But then after you do that, find some other books to read, you know, get some self-help stuff going. You yeah. know, if you know you have yeah. some anger issues, narrow that thing on in. If you know you need to get with your finances, narrow that thing on in. If yeah. you know you got 
issues with your marriage or problems with your kids, narrow that thing on it. Mm -hmm. um, so you start at home and branch out. That's right. what you need to do. But mm -hmm. wherever areas of need are, start there. Just so long as while you're waiting in this time period, don't just let your, your days pass from days to night. Make something of time. And, yeah. and like you said, Cortez, find some online classes. Find some online workshops. Find something to do with this time so that when you come out of this season, this this period, mm -hmm. that you are different. There's not a re reason why when we come out of this, we should be the same. Why should right. we be the same when we yeah. come out of this? There's no yeah. reason. You yeah. should want yeah, absolutely. It, it is a, a serious need. Uh, you know, I have several uh, doctorate degrees from YouTube University. Um, ah. and I, I'm telling you, man, uh, I've learned. I once took an entire steering wheel off my car uh, to fix something uh, based on a YouTube video, and it all worked out. Um, <laughs> so you can, can take this time to learn, uh, Shelley said it best, uh, reconnect to your creator, reconnect family, man. One of the things that I'm doing this week is sitting down with my boys and, uh, they're finally old enough to reveal to them the entire legacy plan, right? This mm -hmm. is what I'm building and I've been building it alone and letting you guys grow through your own lives and make some of your own choices. But now is the time for us to uh, start building as a family. And let me show you how each one of you fit into this vision, right? See, you adopt my vision until God reveals to you your vision and we build as a family. But ultimately, you guys will break off and do your own thing in the next 24 to 36 months or whatever. But right yeah. now, Let's talk about what we can build together. So uh, take care of your spiritual health, man. Uh, take care of your physical health, guys. I mean, you talk about you don't have time to go to the gym. Listen, again, YouTube University. I was up this morning. What did I go find? I needed a 20-minute app workout. Found one right on YouTube. Popped my mat down in the living room and I got it in, right? Get your spiritual health together. Get your relational health together. If you guys are struggling with relationships anywhere, whether it's marital, whether it's parent, child, whether it's friend, sister, cousin, brother, uncle, whatever. Uh, Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, is a great resource for you to go check out on that, right? It talks about how people receive love versus how people give love. And sometimes the way you give in love ain't the way I receive it. So therefore, despite all of your efforts, I feel like you don't love me. And there that is, is real. Um, so real. what's your love language? Real quick, what's your love language? My love language is words of affirmation and physical uh, touch. Okay, okay. Yep. Mine, for anybody listening, who cares? <laughs> Mine is, um, and it's so me, and I was like, oh, receive it lord mine is give giving and receiving which is mm -hmm. anybody that knows me knows that i am a giver mm -hmm. and like i love to give gifts um yeah. and anyone that knows me knows that i'm a giver um but i love giving gifts and receiving gifts so um that is my number one um love language is, is receiving gifts i love gifts so give to me again <laughs> hey, michelle a michelle a um, two a's a a right <laughs> giving and receiving and my second one is affirmation um yeah. i love to build people up you know um, um so i know you love language get out there yeah. take read the book the read the book that's a good thing but take the quiz i got the quiz online i'm fast tracking you what your love language is take there the quiz go. online and out boom um, have your kids take it so you know what their love languages is so you can stop miscommunicating with your kids because i'll tell you a kid who feel like he ain't loved is right. a damaged child that grows up to be a damaged adult. And we know that hurt people hurt people. So yeah. we're at the top of the hour already, Shelle. Um, you know, I think we covered everything that we wanted to cover today. Man, we are so excited that all of y'all decided to come hang out with us this morning. Um, last well, words? Damn. Any last words? 
Oh, any last words? Or you just um, gonna dance us on out? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I just sometimes like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, too much for the people. It's too much. It's too early in the morning for that. that okay. <laughs> Awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you guys tuning in to the St. Louis Hustle Podcast. I'm Cortez Hustle. She's Michelle A. And until we talk to y'all next time, I want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it, each and every single one of you. Now, hustle up.